and welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video, we're going to show how we can nest a linear transform drive inside another interactable and get that linear transform drive to still do the second reaction on that other interactable. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at and it really helps to fund these videos. So we're going to be using the scene with the pump action shotgun and what we're going to do is make it so this pump action shotgun which we can control with both hands where we grab it with one hand and then we grab it with the other hand and we can control its direction we can actually turn the pump on this pump action shotgun into a linear transform drive so we can actually pump that down and up whilst we're holding the gun and i've added some additional things into the shotgun that were in the handgun video just where we've got the fire gun logic and we've got the particle that comes out of the barrel when we fire the gun so let's look at making this pump into a linear transform drive. So we're going to do this in two ways. The first way is we're going to nest our controllable within our interactable. So we're going to go and select our pump. We can see our shotgun pump here. And all I'm going to do is go to window, then to Tilia, then to interactions, then to controllable creator. And we're going to turn this into a linear transform drive. So select linear transform drive and click convert. And then we're going to close this window down. And then we're going to set up our linear transform drive. We can see by default it's going across the wrong axis. So we want it to go forward down our z-axis. So we'll change that to z-axis. And I'm just going to change the drive speed just to make it a bit faster. So I'm going to just put that at 15. And I'm just going to reduce the ungrabbed and grabbed drag as well down to 1. And now what we want to do is we want our pump whenever we let go of it to always move back to the furthest top position. So we're going to set our move to target value and we're going to set that to 1. And then we're going to set our initial target value to one as well. So it starts all the way up there. But if we zoom in, we can see that our drive limit is too long. So I'm just going to reduce that down to 0.1. And then we can click align to initial target value. And we can see that to put that too far forward. So we're just going to reduce the Z position on here to 0.32. So when it's all the way forward, it will be there. And then if we move it all the way to zero and we align to initial target value, that's where it will be when we pull the pump all the way back. But for this, we do want it to start at one. So we're going to put it back to one and that's where it will start. And then we can see our pump will move from there to there. The next thing we're going to want to do is just make the collider on the pump a trigger collider because we don't want it to interact with the collider that's on the gun. So if I just select this, go through to the shotgun pump, which is nested in the linear transform drive, and I'm just going to turn that to is trigger. And the next thing we want to do is take off any velocities that have been added to this drive when we release it. And the easiest way to do that is if we go to our linear transform drive and then go to the internal game object underneath it, we can see down here it's got a velocity applier reference. If we click the velocity tracker, it will show us the velocity tracker in the hierarchy. So we can just click that. And all we want to do is turn off the artificial velocity applier component. So we'll just untick that. And now we can't apply any artificial velocity when we release this pump. And it should automatically snap back to that maximum position. So if we go and look at our linear drive facade again, because we've set it to move to the target value, it will always try and move back here. But when we grab it, we don't want it to try and push up to there. So what we're going to do is in our linear transform drive, we're going to go to the internal interactable on that. And then we're going to say whenever we grab this and whenever we ungrab it, we're just going to grab our linear transform drive into both of these. And what we're going to do is say when we grab it, we're going to stop that move to target value. So move to target value becomes false. And then when we ungrab it, we're going to put move to target value back to true. So it will then try and move back to that target value of one. So we've pretty much set up our linear transform drive now. So when we grab that, we should be able to pump this towards the gun and then release it and it will go back to its intended original position. However, we've got the problem that this linear transform drive isn't actually part of the interactable. So when we grab it, it won't actually get the interactable to control its direction to our secondary grabbing controller. So we're going to hook that up now. So when we do grab our linear transform drive, it passes that information to the parent interactable and tells it that we want to actually use it to control the direction as well. So what we're going to do just for now is collapse a bunch of these things up and I'm going to create a new empty game object in our shotgun object. And I'm going to call this control direction on pump grab. And then within there, I'm going to create two other game objects that are going to hold the logic for when we grab the pump and when we ungrab the pump. And I'm just going to call them on pump grab and on pump ungrab. And with both on pump grab and on pump ungrab selected, I'm going to add a component of game object event proxy emitter. And what we're going to use this for is when we grab our interactable for the pump, we're going to take that grab information and we're going to pass it into the parent shotgun interactable. And we're going to tell it when we've grabbed, consider the primary grab of our pump, the secondary grab of our shotgun, which will control its direction. So all we need to do on on pump grab, we're going to add a listener. And now what we need to do is hook this listener into what the shotgun's doing on that secondary grab. So if we go to the shotgun, 
and then we look down at the second reaction the second reaction here is control direction if we click the little eye it'll highlight the control direction prefab and we can click on that and if we expand this and expand the input receivers we can see one of these is called input game object grab and input game object ungrab and these are what handle the grabbing from an interactor on this interactable so all we need to do in our logic down on our on pump grab for this listener we're just going to make sure it calls this so we're going to drag the input game object grab into there and then on the function the game object event proximity there just needs to call receive and we do the same for the on pump on grab as well so we're going to add a listener and then we're going to call the control directions input receiver game object on grab and again the event proximity just call receive and all that's going to do now is we're going to hook this up in a minute so this information is passed over when we grab this it will be considered a primary interactor grab but we're going to pass that over to the shotgun and then it will consider it as a secondary interactor grab and what we're also going to say as well is by default we can't grab this pump without grabbing the gun so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this game object off and then on our shotgun we're going to come here and we're going to say on first grabbed and on last ungrabbed when we first grab it this game object is going to be turned on and when we ungrab it we're going to turn this game object back off and we also need to handle the fact that when we release the shotgun we need to make sure we release the grab on this internal interactable as well so when this shotgun is last ungrabbed so when nothing else is grabbing the actual shotgun we want to force ungrab the internal linear transform drive interactable as well so on that linear transform drive if we expand that we're just going to clap some of this up that interactable there so if we go back to the shotgun one grab the internal interactable put it into there and then if we look in the interactable facade we're just going to call ungrab all so if we release our shotgun we're automatically going to release the grab on that pump as well we're not going to worry about swapping hands at this stage we'll cover that in a future video so with that set up what we need to do now is when we grab this pump we want to make sure we call the on pump grab so we can do that easily by going into the linear transform drive and then going into the interactable and then if we look down at the primary action it's set to follow we want to click the eye again and that will show us the prefab that's doing the follow action and if we expand that and then expand the input receivers we can see here if i just make this a little bit wider we can see we've got an input object grab and an input object ungrab and what we want to do is on the grab so when we grab this internal interactable we're going to add another listener and all we're going to do is call our on pump grab and that'll handle passing it over to our shotgun so we're just going to call receive there and then on the ungrab we're going to add another listener and we're going to call on pump ungrab and the function is game object event proximity receive and that will handle the fact of now when we grab our shotgun it'll hold in our hand we can press the trigger with our main trigger and then when we grab that pump with the secondary hand it's not only going to cause us to control that pump direction as well but it will also allow us to control the direction of the shotgun the final thing we want to do is on our interactable for the shotgun pump we just want to make sure we go down to the rigid body on there and make sure it's set to kinematic it should be by default but we need to make sure this is kinematic otherwise it's going to start applying gravity to our main shotgun which isn't what we want so there we go we've set the shotgun up now with a nested linear transform drive however those who are used to unity will know that nesting a rigid body within another rigid body can cause issues if we look down here we can see our interactable facade for our shotgun pump has a rigid body on it and then that's also nested in our interactable shotgun which also has a rigid body on it and that could cause us issues in certain circumstances so what I'm going to do is quickly show another way of setting this up without nesting the controllable within the other interactable. So if we collapse all this up and just zoom out, what I'm going to do is just collapse the shotgun. We'll move this over to the right and I'm just going to make a copy of this and move that over to the left. And I'm just going to rename this one shotgun no nesting. And what we're going to do with this one is instead of having that nested within it, we're going to use an object follow to get our linear transform drive to follow around the game object of the shotgun. So in our no nesting, we're going to add an object follower. So just on no nesting, I'm going to right click, go down to Tilia, prefabs, then to mutators, and then to object follower. And we're going to come back and we're going to use this in a moment. But before we do that, let's just zoom in. What we want to do is take our pump outside of here. So if I just grab the pump and we can see our shotgun pump is there, what I want to do is grab that and drag it outside so it's at the same level as our shotgun. I'm just going to put it above it so it's there now. And what we want to do is have this follow around wherever that pump would be so what we need to do here is i'm just going to grab that mesh and we need to copy this mesh and put it back into this mesh over here so i'm just going to copy this and all i'm going to do is grab that drag it and drop it back into the original shotgun 
but we don't want a double mesh. I'm just going to turn off the mesh renderer and I'm going to turn off the box collider for that one as well. And then if we go back and look at our shotgun pump now, we can see that's going to start there and it's going to follow around wherever we put this mesh. Now for this to work, we need this mesh that's inside our shotgun to actually be in the central point. So on our linear transform drive, I'm just going to put the initial target value to 0.5 and align to target value. So that's where we need that other mesh to be. So if I go and look at that other mesh, we can see it's actually further forward. I'm just going to drag this back, get it roughly into position. So it needs to be there because that's what we're going to be following around. So if we go back to our linear transform drive and set this to initial target value of one, that'll be fine for it to start over there. And now all we need to do is go to our object follower and we're going to say the source that we're following is the shotgun pump one, which is the one inside shotgun. So we grab, drag and drop that into elements. And the target, the thing that we're changing, is the entire linear transform drive. So we're going to grab, drag and drop the linear transform drive into the targets element. Now we just need to set some things up on our object follower as well. If we expand this and expand internal and then expand follow modifier and then transform follow, we don't actually want it to change the scale of our pump. So select scale and we're just going to turn that off completely so this transform scale won't apply. And then the next thing we're going to notice as well is if we just run this as is, we're going to notice that the pump has a little bit of lag over the shotgun because it's always following a frame behind. And that's because this moment processor pre-render moment is running out of step of the moment processors within our interactable shotgun. So if we go and look at our interactable shotgun and first of all, look at our primary action settings. So primary action and just click the eye. That will take us down here. And then if we look at the grab interactable follow action, we can see it's using follow track and a follow transform. So we need to go and get the moment processor for the follow transform. So if we look down here, we can see the follow transform modifier. If we just select that, it will take us down to follow transform. And then if we select that, we can see this moment processor here. So what we want to do is we want our mutators object follower process to run as soon as this happens. So what we can do is add another element here and then just grab the moment processor and drag and drop it into there. So that means the object follower's moment processor will run as soon as this moment processor runs on the follow action. We also need to do the same on the control direction. So we can minimize this and while we've got control direction here, we can expand this. And then if we go down to action logic and expand that and then direction modifier, we can see this has got its own moment processor as well. And all we need to do is add another one here, grab the one from the object follower, grab that moment processor and drop it into there. So that means the moment processor will run in its own frame here. It will also make sure it runs when we're doing the follow and it will also make sure it runs when we're doing the control direction. So this will always match wherever this gun is going. Now, the last thing we need to do with this shotgun, because we've moved that shotgun pump outside of here, what we're going to notice is the rotations are actually different. So if we go down and look at our shotgun pump one, which is what we're following, we can see the rotation is actually minus 90. And this really needs to match that as well. So if we were to change that to minus 90, we can see now our pump is actually incorrect. So what we need to do is fix this. And really, we need to make sure it all goes in the correct direction. So for this, we're actually going to change our shotgun pump from minus 90 to 90. And then we're going to go back over to this shotgun pump and we're going to set the internal rotation to zero. We just need to make sure our interactable is set to a Z of zero as well. That puts it into the right position. And then if we look at our shotgun pump, we can see we're actually now going down the wrong axis. We're going up and down. We really want to be going across the green axis or Y. So what we're going to do is change our drive axis to Y. And there we go, we've now set up our shotgun. So instead of having this linear transform drive nested within our shotgun interactable, it's using the object follower to follow that around the scene and track its position wherever we move it. So let's jump into the scene and see these working. So now we're in the scene. If I pick the shotgun up on the left, this is the nested one. We can see we can move it as normal. If I hold the trigger down and press fire, we can see that the confetti comes out of the end. And then if I have to grab this linear transform drive, grab the pump, we can see it controls direction and I can move that linear transform drive up and down in a pumping action. So we can use this shotgun as we expect. And then if we look over at the other shotgun, this one doesn't have any nesting. So this is using the object follow to follow it around and we can see it's tracking nicely. It works the same way. We can press the trigger and fire the shotgun and then we can grab the pump. We can pump it and we can also use it to control direction. And there we go, we've set up two game objects, one with a nested transform drive and one with a transform drive that's following the interactable around with an object follow-up. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel, leave any likes, dislikes, comments down below. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron and I'll see you for the next video. Thanks for watching and bye for now.